scribble, 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 scribble. Ugh. Oh, hello. We're going to talk about if graphic design is a good career or not. Do you want to know? Maybe you're wondering if you should actually get a degree in design or just teach yourself. I want to talk about that today. I think graphic design is an amazing career, but you need to know some important things before you jump head first into it. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we're going to talk about some powerful stuff and you need to be notified of everything that we got coming. I'm Adrian Boisel and let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I want you to take into consideration is the size of the opportunity. How big is that opportunity for you? And it really just depends on where you're going to be in your career. If you're in the area that I'm in right now, the opportunity is limitless. If you're at the very beginning of your career, you don't even have a degree. Maybe you've just been kind of dabbling in graphic design as a hobby. And it's just something you're passionate about doing. You're a great artist. You're probably going to be broke. And it's just the reality. It's just the hard truth of the situation. So looking at the different sizes of the opportunity, there's different ways to do this. There are different people who talk about this, but I want to talk about this tangibly for you. And what you need to look at is if you're a beginning graphic designer and all you do is graphic design, the graphic design space is incredibly competitive. You're competing with people who are willing to work for two, three, four, five dollars an hour, sometimes even less than that. And that's very difficult to compete with, especially if you're a US based creative where the cost of living is much, much higher. And so what I would categorize that is the opportunity of just being a graphic designer only and doing nothing except for graphic design is probably a level two or level three opportunity. You're probably going to be a level one, level two type of creative at that point, because you're going to be at the beginning of your career as you're just starting out. And that's going to equal out to you being broke. Now, as you continue to get more work, build more case studies, build a reputation, get reviews, do all these great things, you're going to start to scale beyond just only doing graphic design. And you're going to start to learn how to do other things like maybe working on a website, doing some more sophisticated like branding designs and coming up with business cards and stationaries and maybe even working on some YouTube stuff, right? You start to expand your skill set and start to go wider and not just deeper. And when you start to expand your skill set and add things on like marketing and SEO and web design and these other services, you start to increase your ticket price and that opportunity starts to grow. And so now you go from a level two or three opportunity to a level five opportunity. And this is where you go to start being comfortable. You're no longer making bad money, low income. You may be not making great money, but you're making enough to actually pay your bills, have some extra money at the month and just get by, right? This is the area that I was at for many years and I stayed stuck there for a very long time. And it's a big part of why I'm doing what I'm doing today because I don't want people to stay stuck in that zone because I got the design, then I got the marketing, but I really didn't understand how to build an agency or be a great business owner. And this is an area for you to level up and to go from the level two, three, four business owner to a level five, six, and ultimately to seven. And so let's talk about seven. What does seven actually look like? Well, this is where you go from being a freelancer or a consultant and working in just uh, kind of your for yourself or maybe even as an employee to elevating your game. Now you have a job, you got consistent work coming in and you want to take the next step and you want to start taking these processes and systems and design work and success that you have and using other people's time and leveraging other people's skills to make you more money. And so this is the area that I stepped into in 2015 what has been a crazy journey for me, a lot of learning lessons, a lot of stumbling along the way. And I've really had to go from being a level two, three, four, five business owner to now what I think I'm probably on level six. I don't think I'm a level seven yet. I know I will get there, but I'm enjoying the journey of where I'm at because being a level seven, that's the top level business owner that you can take. But I also was operating for many years in a level five opportunity. It wasn't until I really took the Instagraphics brand to heart to really see clearly what the opportunity is that I have in front of me. As an example, the opportunity for Instagraphics is to build a software, to have a podcast, to have courses, to have academy, to have a group coaching program, which I've talked about and I just released. We have our own group coaching program called the Instagraphics Pro Group, right? The opportunity is starting to get very big. I can now start to serve people on YouTube. I can start to serve people in courses and content and education and software, right? The opportunity now becomes endless where I have a very furious and relentless dream and vision of being a bigger and more established and more impactful, more importantly, more impactful company than Adobe. I'm coming for Adobe as number one in the graphics industry. And I know that it's possible. That is what we would call a level 10 opportunity. That's going to require a level seven business owner to achieve 
that Adobe or bigger level of success. And so there's a trajectory that you need to go on and you need to be able to assess the size of the opportunity that you're in. If you're a very, very skilled graphic designer doing world changing work and all you're doing is only graphic designs and you haven't touched the NFT space or you haven't touched big name brands, you're only hurting yourself. It's time to elevate your game and find a bigger opportunity, especially if you're an employee. That's a small opportunity that's limiting and there's a ceiling on that that I want you to smash through. So I want to ask yourself, what level of opportunity are you in right now? Are you an employee? Are you a hobbyist? Are you a freelancer? Are you an agency owner? I want to know down below, drop a comment. Because when I started, I said, like I said, I was only doing graphic design, making 30 bucks in a flyer, making like 10, 15 bucks an hour at my very best, which got me by at the time, but it wasn't a great living. It was basically just, I was just able to survive. And then I added printing that increased the ticket price, started to increase my income. And that's when I moved into the six figure mark. And so what kind of opportunity are you currently sitting in right now? Maybe you're sitting on a level 10 opportunity, but your level of skill isn't there yet. And so you need to raise that skill set and start to figure out how you can put yourself around people like me, people like Chris Doe, other leaders out there in the industry that can help you level up your skills in this massive opportunity that you're sitting on. The next piece that I know you're probably wanting to know, and this is super important, is your pay. Knowing that whether graphic design is a good career is really going to depend on what you're getting paid. If you're a starving artist and you're eating cold food out of a can because you can't afford anything else and you have to have 17 roommates, probably not a very fulfilling feeling, right? You want to get paid well for what you do, even at the very beginning of your career. 10 to $15 an hour isn't amazing, but it's a livable wage. Maybe not 10, but $15 an hour, and depending on where you live, can be a livable wage as you continue to earn your reputation and earn that, build that portfolio and become a better creative and better designer. So there's really only three categories that I like to put people into. Two of them are business owners and we're gonna talk about those, but the first one is being an employee. This is the, usually the first place where graphic designers start after they're just doing it on the side as a side hustle or in college, is they wanna get a job, they wanna get an internship somewhere and be an employee and doing graphic design because they're passionate about being a creative. In this area, if you look at the actual statistics online, you can Google this yourself. What does the average graphic design employee make? You're looking at 30 to $50,000 a year. Ugh, I remember what that was like. I will never go back to that time, obviously, because my skill sets have become so sharp. But at the same time, everybody starts at zero. So don't feel bad if you have to start as an employee or start as an intern to get your chops, to build your portfolio, to build your experience. Everybody starts at zero but this is the first place you need to start. And this is something you need to be expecting if you're stepping into that world with your college degree, you're not gonna go out and make six figures. It's just not gonna happen unless you're like some world renowned artist that's been doing it for years and all of a sudden has award winning work. That's, that's the exception, that's not the rule. And I wanna talk about what the truths are and what the general rules are. And being an employee, you're gonna get the lowest income possible. Now, as you start to elevate your game, you start to increase your skills, this is where you step out of just being an employee and maybe start to supplement your income as a freelancer. And then once your freelancing business really explodes, you can be a full-time freelancer. And this is where the incomes really start to shift and change for you, where now you start to be comfortable, like I said in the first part. That comfortableness is gonna put you anywhere between the 50 and the $100,000 a year range. And now you can start to go on trips and put money away and make investments and start to make some strategic decisions to move either towards more of a serious, graphic design career, a bigger authoritative position as you've built a bigger portfolio, a bigger resume and have more experience, or you go out and start a business. And this is where the third piece comes in. And this is where the income becomes limitless. And this is what I call the creative agency owner. And you go from just being a solopreneur, solo freelance business owner and working on side projects for this company and that company, and really capping your income at about the hundred grand a year range to now, you step into a much bigger opportunity, a much bigger pay, and you start making six figures and more by upselling other services, upselling other people's time that are on your team. You hire a web designer and you get an amazing web designer and they go out and start selling web designs and you charge five, 10, 15, $25,000 for web design. And now your $1,000 a year client or your $1,000 lifetime value client becomes $100,000, right? I have dozens of clients and each of these clients pay me a minimum of six figures a year. Imagine what would that be like for you if you were able to get 20 clients that all paid you six figures a year as an agency owner and all of those tasks were completely delegated to people who were as talented as you, if not more talented. What kind of money could that bring to you? And all you had to do was oversee the business and be a great delegator, right? 
You can't do that without a lot of systems and processes and documentation in place, but it's a journey. Again, it's all part of increasing your skill set. So these are things that you need to be thinking about when it comes to pay, is just knowing at where you fall in in that journey. So that part makes me curious. I wanna know where you're at in your journey. There's no shame in no matter where you are, whether you're the most seasoned veteran out there and you're watching this video, or you're a brand new newbie who hasn't even started downloading the design programs yet. It doesn't matter. I wanna know who you are, what brought you to this video, what part of your career you're in. Are you an employee? Are you a hobbyist? Are you a freelancer? Or are you a full-time agency owner? I wanna know who's watching this so I can help create more content that's gonna be able to serve you at an even higher level. The last piece, and it's not last but least, but last because it's very important and I really wanna send you guys home with this, is fulfillment. A lot of people like you and I do what we do because we're passionate about creating things, an idea that comes into our mind and putting it into the real world. There's nothing cooler than seeing a hat with your logo on it or seeing a coffee mug with your, with your logo on it, right? Something that you created that came from your mind out of nowhere and all of a sudden is now in a physical product or in a website or something. There's just very few things that are as fulfilling as that for a creative. So being able to see your creativity expressed out into the real world is super motivating. So getting fulfillment in what you do is a big part of being a graphic designer. And so if you're a creative, you're an artist, and you're people that like to just put things out into the world, graphic design can be a very fulfilling job. So if you're the creative type like me, then you may like to just draw or create or do digital illustrations or whatever it is that you love to do and just create, and you would do it for free. But there are certain aspects of your personality that may limit the success. And a lot of these things are really limiting beliefs in your mind that anybody can overcome. Because a lot of people think that introverts are not, not naturally good salespeople or people people, but it's not true. It is actually scientifically proven that introverts are actually better salespeople because they don't over talk and over speak like extroverts do, like I do a lot of times, even in these videos. And so really being honest with yourself and asking yourself a few questions is really gonna help you narrow down if this is the right career field and if you're gonna get fulfillment for this. The first question that you need to ask yourself is if you're an introvert and all you wanna do is create and you don't wanna deal with people, then you may just need to be a career employee and just be a designer and just focus on doing that because that's gonna bring you a lot of fulfillment. Sometimes you may have to sacrifice your income to get the fulfillment that you want. You're not gonna be able to be the salesperson. You're not gonna be the business owner. You may just need to come alongside somebody that's a visionary, a business owner like myself that sees your incredible gift and your incredible talent and is just okay with you being behind the scenes. It's not that you're gonna get horrible money and you can work up over time, but the real truth is, is if you're introverted and you're not dealing with people and you're not doing the sales side or the relationship side of things, you're really gonna cap your income because you're probably gonna stay in that employee role. The second question you gotta ask yourself is if you are a people person, you are extroverted and you do wanna help people and serve people and meet people face to face, you need to ask yourself if you have the business acumen and the business skills or traits yet to move from employee to freelancer or from freelancer to agency owner. It takes a lot of skills, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. And if you haven't done any reading on business books, like I talk about on this channel, or have any experience in running a business, dealing with clients or any of that stuff, that is your first place you wanna start. So being a part-time side gig type of freelancer first, getting some experience and seeing if you even like dealing with clients is an important place to start. And so this is something you wanna ask yourself. You gotta be super honest with yourself because understanding that fulfillment side, if you go out and deal with people and you go out and have a lot of problems and you create a lot of problems for yourself by trying to be the business owner without that experience, you're gonna end up burning yourself out and leaving the industry entirely when maybe that's really where your heart and your passion was. You just didn't have the business skills yet. So this is just an important question I think you should ask yourself of where you're at along your journey. The third question you need to ask yourself, and this is huge, this is a big deal. I asked this in the Instagraphics Pro Network the other day, and if you haven't joined that, you really should, is do you wanna work on a team or do you wanna work alone? If you have no interest in delegating and telling somebody what to do and managing them and managing their, their personal problems and their business problems and their, their inefficiencies, and that's just gonna to be too much for you, then maybe just being a solo freelancer, doing some great design work, charging some high tickets because you're really good, Maybe that's the answer. Maybe just being a freelancer and staying as a freelancer is where you should be. Just because you're a graphic designer, it doesn't mean you need to do what I'm doing. My journey isn't for everybody. Trust me, it's not an easy journey. But if it is for you, you've not want, not only one, found the right person, but two, you're gonna be able to get the, the wisdom, the connection and the community from surrounding yourself with a team. And that's gonna lift you up 
that's gonna raise your skill set. It's gonna force you to learn things that you didn't even know about yourself. So this is why I love entrepreneurship, why I love being a business owner, because it's forced me to become a better communicator, a better leader, a better boss, like all of these things that come along with that. And if that's something that you really want, then being an agency owner is a really good way to get that. The last question that I want you to ask yourself, and this is a really, really big one, is do you value your time and having control over your calendar? Or are you one of those people that needs discipline, that needs structure, that needs to be able to clock in, clock out, have a specific set of task lists that you go in and knock out and get done, and then go home and check out and not have to think about work? If that's the type of person that you are, then you may wanna just stay an employee and work your way up from beginning intern designer to senior level designer, right? Being an employee is a great thing for some people. For some people, they want to control their calendar. They want to be able to wake up when they want to wake up, go to bed when they want to go to bed, deal with clients when they want to deal with clients. I have complete control over my calendar. And for me, that was initially what sparked me to be a business owner as I was working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks in the car business for seven days straight, 14 days straight. It was crazy. I had no control over my calendar. They say when I show up, they you know get on me when I don't show up on time, all the different things. It just wasn't for me. I'm too much of a rebel. I'm too much of a free thinker and free spirit to ever be an employee. I'm kind of broken, to be honest, in that sense. And so you just need to be honest with yourself and understand that where do you want your schedule? Who do you want to control your schedule? Do you want to control your schedule and your time and how you use it? Or do you want somebody else to control that? These are important questions to ask yourself. You really need to take these to heart and think about them. And this is all leading back to the question that I said in the beginning, is graphic design a good career? It's really subjective and it's all about perspective of how you look at it. Is it glass half full or is it glass half empty, right? These are important things to think about. Either way, graphic design can be an amazing career and graphic design can be a horrible career. If you're in a third world country making a dollar an hour, working in a sweatshop on a team with a bunch of other designers downloading stock assets and not getting to be creative, that sounds like torture. But if you're a creative that gets to lead or run a team or do everything that you love to do on a day-to-day -day basis, even if you're in the confines of somebody else's schedule, then that's fulfillment. And that's really what I want for you guys. And that's what I hope you guys walk away from in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you check out the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. This is my invitation as always for you to join. I would love to see you guys there. Make sure you fill out all the questions and I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boisel and as always, keep looking up.